Well, still to come, as we said, it is Notre Dame. How about that senior, Jaron Grant, needs a big game. And Jaron Grant didn't have a great game last night, but when they played Duke back on January 23rd, he was a monster. And they're going to need him to be just like that tonight if they plan on getting a win in Greensboro Coliseum. Yeah, he's a senior, and he wants to finish up his career with a conference championship. And, well, we go from a senior to a freshman. There's the ACC's Player of the Year. And speaking of monsters, well, he's the captain of the Monstars, believe it or not, Mike, because there's only one guy like Jaleel Okafor, not just in the ACC, but in the country. And he is a special talent that is accustomed to getting the job done on the big stage. Well, it was a pretty balanced scoring attack in our first game, but Marcus Page... 14 points, five assists. In a moment, we're going to visit with the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference, John Swafford. So stick around. We'll be right back. This blank canvas has taken shape, and the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament is now the centerpiece. We are in the era of new artists looking to create their own legacies. This is the ACC Tournament. We'll be back in a moment. Roy Williams. Boy, was he fired up today. We'll be back, but first a word from your local ACC station. Only a few have earned the right to be called champion of the ACC. One team from the old Tobacco Road and another from the new bloodline of ACC basketball fight for the final spot in the championship round. It's Duke and Notre Dame on the ACC Network. twice in the regular season. The Rubberbacks is straight ahead here in Tournament Town, the Greensboro Coliseum, the New York Life Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Mike and Corey back with you now. And Corey, the Irish and the Blue Devils, what do you think? Well, honestly, Mike, when you look at the way the series went this year with, this year with these two teams, you think about what Notre Dame was able to do at home, a four-point win, of course, and then the, the rematch when they came to Duke, it was a blowout. The Blue Devils ran over the Fighting Irish and Cameron Indoor, so I think Notre Dame may want to get back on the winning side of this. All right, if you didn't see those two meetings, we want to catch you up on what happened. Here was game one in South Bend. And you got Jaron Grant shooting from made pretty much half court the half court shot right there could come into key later in this game but the second game it was all blue devils and they played like they had a chip on their shoulders especially Jalil Okafor in the paint was able to get the job done and Duke with a blowout victory in their home court yeah I, w I was really surprised at the score of that one in Cameron okay now let's get your Carolina Ford keys to our matchup Notre Dame and Duke well, Mike, you know, for, for Notre Dame, they can't be content for the fact that they're in the ACC tournament semifinals, and they also can't be content about the fact they beat Duke this year. They've got to come out hungry and trying to get a win here. And on the other side for Duke, they have to establish Jalil Okafor early in the game. They were able to do that yesterday. Because of it, they were able to get a lot of easy three-pointers and wide-open looks, but they've got to establish the big guy in the paint early in the game. All right. Hey, folks, uh, Timmy B, Tim Brando has joined our ACC party here, and he's with Mike Jaminski for the call here of this second semifinal. Thank you, Mike. It's good to be back with old Reliable here, the G-Man. And going back to those two encounters, it was after the game against uh, Notre Dame that Coach K decided to change the lineup going with Okafor and four guards, which against Notre Dame, the kind of team that swings the ball around the perimeter was a wise choice. Yeah, this is these are two very good offensive teams now. Uh, it was, a, you know, the difference, Jaron, Jaron Grant in the win, 23 points, and yeah. the loss of Durham, only seven, and uh, it was really a beatdown in Cameron. So Notre Dame really has to score the basketball. Do you figure some of what they did to take Cat Barber out of his flow? They may attempt to do with Jaron Grant. Yeah, I think, you know, make other people st step up, whether it's Connaughton or, you know, some scoring inside. But uh, this is a very explosive offensive team in the Irish. The North Carolina Tar Heels await the winner of this game. 
Final piece to the ACC tournament puzzle. Semi-final round. Notre Dame. Duke. Lineups are next. We welcome you back to Greensboro, North Carolina. Greensboro Coliseum site of the second semifinal. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, and Jaron Grant is the guy to look for for Mike Gray's team. Well, he's done so much. The only player in Notre Dame history, 1,600 points, 600 assists, 150 steals, 30 blocks. So very versatile. The rest of the ensemble, and every one of them can shoot, and they really know how to pass. Demetrius Jackson, Vestoria, Connaughton, the do-everything, future baseball pitcher, Zach August is the other starter in the middle. He'll take on Okafor, and Jaleel Okafor, player of the year in the ACC. Talk about, you know you know the history of this league, Tim, the only freshman ever to do that, and the numbers back it up. He did miss one game with an injury, but he has been outstanding. Uh, heavy burden for Zach August in the post tonight. And the rest of the Food Lions starting lineups for the Devils, Tyus Jones, what a remarkable freshman campaign he's had with the senior leader, Quinn Cook. Winslow and Matt Jones, the rest of Coach K's starting five. It's the Blue Devils. And the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. It's the second semifinal to see who plays North Carolina for the title. Mike Krzyzewski's last ACC tournament title came in 2011. His focus is generally every fourth year win one. And that being the case in North Carolina, a date for game three within a month for them. You can bet the eyes are on the prize for the winningest coach in college basketball history. His counterpart, though, tonight, new to Notre Dame in the ACC, but old to Notre Dame for a long period of time now. Mike Bray, it's hard to believe he's now in year 16, and of course tutored under Mike Krzyzewski, as you well know, and how well, much it would mean to him to get one. He's the first assistant in Mike's tenure to come back and coach in the ACC against him. And Deb Antonelli talked to Mike and got some inside scoop. Go ahead, Deb. I did speak to Coach Bray before the game, and we've got the two best offensive teams, both are over 50% from the floor, the only teams offensively over 50%. He says, we're playing a great offensive team tonight, so their first attempt defensively is going to be to play Okafor straight up. They're gonna to try to crowd him from the perimeter, but it's important to recover to the three-point shooters. So that's plan A to start the game defensively. Well, it's, you know, to put Zach August on an island like that, he knows it going in, and uh, but a smart play to stay at home on the perimeter to try to keep their three-point shooters calm down. Yeah, the idea being Okafor is only going to get two. The others can get three and more, right? Inside Winslow with a little high-low game. That one's rejected from the backside, deflected by August into Jaron Grant's hands. That's a really nice job bodying up inside on that play. Our officials tonight, Jamie Lucky, Sean Hall, and Tim Nestor. Jackson has it knocked away. Outlet to Tyus Jones, past Grant. That's amazing, Tim. Tyus Jones seems to play his best in the biggest stages. He's had, uh, he's had his best games this year against the best teams. Astoria. Lit it up in the first half, struggled in the second last night. There's Grant off the curl. Oh, the iron kind early to the Irish, and we're tied at two. I know you're fired up. That only took a minute and one second to get the first <laughs> iron kind. Well, I haven't. The, the unkind hasn't happened yet. <laughs> August really fighting for position, trying to get Okafor off the lane. It's been wow. well defended by August. I, he was man enough that time, wasn't he? Well, Okafor understood, too. He was looking around. He was waiting for the double team to come, and when he saw it wasn't, he went to work, but August stood his ground. Ball movement, such a key for the Irish. That time, you saw Vastoria just challenge the cup, and Mike Krzyzewski did not like that. 
That's too easy. And uh, when you see an early timeout like that, you know that Mike Krzyzewski is trying to get their attention quickly. And that is just solid low post defense. Winslow just, uh, just close out right there, and that's uh, an easy drive inside. Well, the Irish, what a remarkable year. Mike Gray's had. It's been a long time since they've won that many. And oh, by the way, the game was a little different in 1908 9. Grant responsible for just under 43% of their production. But again, it's their ability to move the ball. And of course, uh, Duke in the middle of a 12 game win streak just absolutely blew North Carolina State off the floor. To just about everyone's amazement here last night. It was a little shock and awe last night early on in that game. And uh, I don't know, I can remember a player going from 34 points in one game to zero the next night. They just took Cat Barber out of that game. Winslow moving inside, and that's going to be a charge. Player control. Uh, Winslow has had, you know, he had a part of the middle of the year where he was really dealing with some injuries, had a rib injury, other issues, but he's finally gotten healthy, and his game has really elevated since that time. Connaughton and Vastoria are real keys to this game to go along with Grant because they can score, and they seemingly are always in the right spot at the right time. Well, Connaughton is such a unique player at his size, but he gives you rebounding, three-point shooting. August comes up empty. Over two and it's gone by and wins low. This is not a good offensive rebounding team in Notre Dame and they'll miss a whole lot. But there won't be a lot of second chances. Oh, that was a nice steal by Demetrius Jackson. A couple of turnovers now by Duke. A lot of pressure at home on him last year, Tim. A hometown product of McDonald's All-American. Oh, what a feed. What a feed. Connaughton to August. Talk about all the things that he can do. Averages just under two assists a game as well. Saw well, one of the best defensive teams in college basketball in Virginia go down, give up 60-plus uh, points to North Carolina tonight. The Irish are as efficient offensively as Virginia is defensively. Matt Jones. He's fouled. It'll go against Connaughton. Here again is the uh, this is a team. It's not a great defensive team, but they've been making some nice plays here, especially August. He's been active in the post. And a good look ahead by uh, Jackson. Inside they deal to Okafor. Freshman to freshman there. Yeah, a little screening action inside to Okafor. Great hands, great finish. was not ready for that pass. It's a good bounce pass entry, but it surprised him. Cook lobbing it into Okafor. That's a mismatch, but a foul. Uh, Dial bailed him out on the foul that time. Vastoria left Winslow, and he was wide open. Here's that look. You see the little two-man game. The August forced to step out on that, and uh, weak side help late coming down in, in for uh, Vassoria. Talked to Mike Gray, practiced the other day, and I asked him about year two, and he says, "Well, it sure was good to have 22 back. I became a much better ACC coach." Well, <laughs> just 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 think, Tim, if if he had had him last year, oh my goodness, the year that they would have. All of the talk about the dominance and the number one seeds, I think we spend way too much time on that from time to time. You're looking for a club that maybe is on the three line or two line. Notre Dame is a team that can go deep next week when the NCAAs begin. Yeah, I think the question with them is can they defend well enough to get deep? They, they, can, time, they, can, right. they can score with anybody in the country. And very few teams can score every time out and have as many options as they have. You know, they're going to. They'll put 80 up on the board and say, if you can score 85, you can beat it. Come and get it. Yeah. Tough shot for Grant. Connaughton runs it down. Shot clock down to five. They got to load up. August inside over Okafor. Right as the buzzer sounded. Ripped down by Winslow. Poor pass there. Numbers for Connaughton to Jackson. Uh, Mike Chess is going to make a substitution. Emil Jefferson coming into the game. 
Some sloppy ball handling early on. And he's already taken one quick shot treatment timeout before the media timeout. Three turnovers in the first four minutes for Duke. Yeah. They're not sharp. They aren't. August comes away with another rebound out to Grant. Stop and go. Well, that time he anticipated Connaughton moving. He didn't. And it's a return to Cinder. The second turnover for the Irish. The Blue Devils looking for a third visit with North Carolina. But first things first, the Irish. Notre Dame with an early three-point lead. Tim and doing it with defense. It's a nice job here by August on Okafor initially inside. Then the dig in and the steal. Nice double team forces another turnover. Three early turnovers for Duke and then the run out. Tyus Jones working on Demetrius Jackson. Jefferson coming in. Checked by Conathan. And uh, Grayson Allen has come into the game for the first time. Played very well. All of the reserves for Duke got a lot of minutes last night. Okafor only played 19 minutes, so he should have fresh legs throughout. Well, you know the value of that, Tim, of taking care of business early and getting your guys rest every minute off the floor like gold. Cook. Oh, tough shot. The Irish doing the job defensively early on for Mike Gray. This is a textbook beginning for Notre Dame. Over the summer, Jackson really settled down, and uh, Mike Gray, along talking, they had a great trip to Italy, which helped so many of their players and came at a great time for his team as Grant was coming back. Bastoria turns Allen around and then is rejected by Okafor out of bounds off of Jaleel with 12 on the shot clock. When you have a reverse dribble in the lane, you got to understand number 15 is going to be lurking there somewhere. <laughs> yes. Just setting the pick. Astoria with one on the clock. Not there. Pulled down by Okafor. Again in the passing lane, August swats it away. Tough shot for Okafor, and that was more of it. it wasn't a double team, but it was a crowd by Basturia. August missed the bunny, but it's tipped through by Jackson. Why that was that was two on five, but uh, those two players and Jackson and August just out hustled Duke. You see the shooting story. The shots on goal so far for Notre Dame. About four more shots than the Blue Devils. There's the look in uh, Notre Dame getting out and running. Nice play. It was the one that August should have finished with the point guard Jackson getting on the glass. Marshall Plumley, the future lieutenant on the floor after six for six field goals against NC State. All of them dunks. Tyus Jones can't hit and Connaughton lost it out of bounds as he was trying to reel in the rebound. Pastoria, by the way, just checked out with two fouls. So the Irish have gone to their bench too. VJ Beecham, number three, has checked into the game. Both of these teams are going to go about seven, eight guys deep max. How about that rejection from Bonzi Colson? Just in, just in with a swat. We got to know his dad over the years, an assistant up at BC. Great player at Rhode Island. Sure was. He actually, his dad was the leading shot blocker in the history of Rhode Island. So the genes got went through. Yes, indeed. And lost it. Try to do too much off the dribble. Numbers. Jackson faster than everyone. Count the basket. Allen got it off the backboard. And Tim, these have been live ball turnovers that are turning into points for Notre Dame right now. Yep. Shashevsky's team is not sharp right now. The Otters have really taken it to them. Yep. They've established the tempo in this game. Duke working in the half court. They're getting out and running. Look at that. All the points are in the paint, and you know they can knock down threes. Another turnover by the Devils. And Mike is exasperated over there. And he's going to, he may have to wait to get it under the 12-minute uh, 
for the next TV timeout. But the yeah. next huddle may be exciting. Yeah, he he very rarely uh, needs a Parker lounger on the bench. He was looking as though he wanted one so for that they, frustration. So I don't know, that sounds real good to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the same hotel room for multiple days sounded pretty good. Oh. Olsen, round and round and in. Neil Jefferson calling everybody in. Trying to get this team together. Great pass inside and the late help from the weak side. Last night, Duke was faster to every loose ball. Tonight, they're a step behind Notre Dame in every 50-50 opportunity. 9-0 run now for the Irish, and they lead by 10. Number two, number 11. This drought has lasted now over four minutes. Cook with a baseline runner. Jefferson trying to keep it alive. And we got a tie ball, the arrow to Notre Dame. Timeout. And I'm sure an earful is coming the Duke players' way when we come back. This is the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. We welcome you to the 2015 New York Life ACC Tournament Semifinals. And let's take a look at our Ruby Tuesday game menu and earlier. North Carolina, a hard-fought win over Virginia. Very exciting down the stretch, and once again, Marcus Page, a big-time play late. Had a lot of help from Jackson, who really turned it on. Three-point shooting, and they come out victorious and will await the winner of this matchup between Notre Dame and Duke. And uh, we'll, we'll see, uh, regardless of the opponent, uh, not getting that double bye, it'll be their fourth game in four days. Yeah, absolutely. They look fatigued late in the game, too, against Virginia. Of course, they can do that to you. Jackson again, counted and a foul. Uh, it's just Notre Dame, to being able to run anything they want. They've found a comfort zone. And right now, uh, Duke has as many turnovers as points in this game. And the sophomore from... Michelle Walker, just outside South Bend, homespun star. Like a blindside story, he's got guardians in, the, yep. in there that have raised him. It really is. You find that from time to time in the college game. We don't talk about it enough. Great stories, really. Okafor with a nice little finger roll. No help coming, I think he's figured that out. Oh, this is, you know, that one on one is working. Duke has only attempted one and field goal for three. Grant turned it over. Tyus Jones gets the easy one. And the emphasis on easy tennis. That's the first open court one they've really gotten. First wide ball turnover. You're right. And the Blue Devils crowd picks up the volume just a bit. Lonzi Colson challenges Okafor right to his chest, and he picks up the foul from him. They'll tell you that's the best thing to do when attacking a big guy. Go right to his chest. Well, a shot blocker, too. And, uh, you know, his dad knew a thing or two about that. And, uh, boy, if you can get uh, Okafor with another quick foul, it would be a huge plus for this team. Zach August will check back into the game, as will Vastoria as Connaughton and Jackson take a seat. Well, as Colson, uh, he, if he knocks down his free throw, almost at his season average halfway through the first half. He's really gotten into better shape, and that's helped him get more playing time as the season's prolonged. 20 to 9, Notre Dame by 11. And this is about as big as Notre Dame can go with both August and Colson on the floor. Grant gets the rebound. Well, hardly anybody, any presence on the offensive glass for Duke. Jack 
Watson out of the game. Grant now running the team. He can do that. Force that one up. August leaning up on the offensive boards, but in doing so, took an extra step. Yeah, he just didn't have a good base underneath him, in, underneath himself that time. I mean, it was a terrific offensive rebound. Set the screen and rolls right into the front of the rim. Good call. See the field goal rebound story. Notre Dame getting the job done on the glass. Cook high arching. Oh, killing me softly with that song. High and softly off the glass. 20 to 11, Notre Dame. Off the curl, inside. Beecham lost it. Picks it back up. Olsen wants to drive again. He's feeling it, this yeah. time at Winslow. He's been aggressive looking for his shot. They have doubled up on Duke. He's able to give Connaughton some early rest in this game. That's a great shot by Okafor. Nice little jump hook baseline. 22 to 13. You know what, Tim? I like the game plan, though. I do, too. To, to play him one-on-one -on -one yeah, and stay at home on everybody else. August leaves it for Colson. Oh, he's feeling it. He's up. He's doubling up his average, Mike. It's right. 24 to 13. Yeah, he is. He has been terrific in this game. Three of three now. Perfect from the floor. Perfect from the free throw line. Nine points. You think, you think Daddy's happy no. watching this? <laughs> Okafor gets it there. That's uh, the first step. As he takes it inside. August ties him up. And I'm going to give Deb Antonelli some credit. Last night we were visiting and we were talking about potentially what you do with Okafor. She said, I would keep up with Okafor with one guy. Mike Bray felt similarly. And it has worked so far here tonight. Welcome you back. The 2015 New York Life ACC Tournament is underway. Capacity crowd here in Greensboro. 24 to 13, our score. The Irish leading by 11. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, and Deb Antonelli. Mike Krzyzewski spent a lot of time in that timeout working over the referees. It felt like Okafor got fouled on that last play. point of contention for Coach K most of the season. It's true just about every big man that plays with his back to the basket in the college game. And they get, well, you get you get your fair share of bumps, so you also get your fair share of calls. Absolutely you do. Yep. Grant just inside the key, can't get it. August is just out playing over four right now. That's part of the problem. And Colson's out playing everybody. How many times in this tournament do we see an unlikely player step up and have a big game or a big tournament? Now look at that. One more time. Right. Getting the roll. He's got the touch. He's in the zone. Yeah, he's, he's still perfect from the floor. It's, he's, he's just playing with a world of confidence right now. He's got 11. And, he, and frankly, with this group, he's a little bit of a tough matchup for Duke. Mike Bray going zone. A little 2-3 right now. Uh, who knows Mike Krzyzewski's team is better than Mike Bray. Okafor, again, single cover, decides to launch, and he connects. He's got nine himself. Well, and uh, he's got nine, the rest of the team, six. Yep. But I'm, I'm impressed with the job August has done in single coverage, though. Let him get his. Well, zone, uh, Duke going a little zone right now. Colson, beautiful pass, counted on a foul. And it's Colson again, and that's where you attack the zone, right in where the ACC is in the lane. High-low action. So John Shire talking with Mike. Yep, right there, good pass down. Nice finish, three-point play opportunity. They got it rolling. Deb Antonelli has more on Bonzi Colson. 
Mike, you said he's perfect in the game tonight. He's perfect the last three consecutive games. Right now, he's 13 for 13 from the floor. And Okafor on the other end, five low post speeds. He's three for four from the, flo from the floor playing in single coverage. So the point being, again, well, we'll, yeah, we'll they'll live, live for that, absolutely. To, to Deb's point when she visited with me last night, and I, I agree wholeheartedly. That's going to be a foul against August. Well, I hope at least you paid. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was a large group, <laughs> and as I recall, yes, I did. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cook hasn't done much. Feeds Okafor there for a slam. That was a beautiful pass by Quinn. 28-17. He's really been the leader for Mike's team. You know, he talks so often about the great freshman, the one and dones, but he always has outstanding senior leadership, and right now it's Quinn Cook that's his guy. Well, you talk about who's going to be important to win a championship for Quinn Cook. He hasn't won one. You that's talk right. about those that four-year drought. Yep. And uh, most, if you stay four years with Duke, chances are pretty good you're going to win an ACC title. Krzyzewski prides himself on it. He really does. Tyus Jones challenging August. Not there. Quick outlet to Jackson. How about those spin moves in behind the back? To Grant and Okafor. Yes and a foul. Second personal foul for Okafor. Uh, this, he did about three different things on this play. They were incredible. Around the back, the spin move, the path outside. And how many three-point play opportunities has Notre Dame had early in this oh. game? The old-fashioned way. You know, it's like watching the Phoenix Suns. You know, it's like watching D'Antoni. You know, the way D'Antoni coaches, that's what they're doing. Spread it, attack it with all of the different options they have. Largest lead of the night for the Irish, 31-17. Look at that by August. Numbers again for the Irish. Jackson. Well, I tell you, he's been quiet. It's Justice Winslow. He is. He has not scored in this game and really struggled. He got picked that time by the center. Yeah. Well, Okafor's got to get back in there. The time is now for Duke. Even with the two fouls, he and Matt Jones are going to get in, and another Duke turnover. <laughs> How good they looked, and uh, 24 hours later, how different it seems for the Blue Devils. And Mark Gottfried's saying, where was this last night? <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> That's 61% against this Duke team. The sound, not one of Mike's best defensive teams, but sound. Bench points. Certainly were not able to do to Jackson what they did to Barber, that's for certain. Long rebound to Cook. This is one on three, and he's rejected. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough decision. Senior, senior trying to do a little bit too much. One on three right there. Jackson. Tyus Jones quicker to the ball that time, past August. And the foul committed by Jaron Grant. And to that, tonight's coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network, and we welcome the nearly one million men and women of the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. Thanks for being with us tonight. We'll go back to that stat. I'll look before 11 points. The rest of the team, 13 points now. The rest of the team, six. Alley ooping to make it 33 to 19. And they need Okafor on the floor just to score at this stage. Well, he's got to be smart. And for this whole half, the centers have been going right at him off the dribble. He's got to play with two fouls now. You know he's going to challenge him. August is there. But the challenge opens up the offensive glass. This has been a relentless attack of the 10 by Notre Dame. A team that can knock down threes, getting all of the points in the paint. Cook, count it. 
first made three of the game for Duke. Duke. That's right. And effectively leaving one guy on Okafor and defending the three. That's what the Irish decided to do, and it has paid major dividends early. Colson, high arching, counted in a foul. Bonzi has bounced tonight. Look at that. You think he wants it? Take it right at the player of the year. And Jefferson, and one. with a 17-point deficit. It's the auto zone in the zone, and it's Bonzine Colson. Colson has done a fantastic job at 6'5". He's an undersized post player on the inside. He hasn't missed a shot. He has attacked the paint. Notre Dame is owning points in the paint right now with this 15-point lead. 30-12, to 12, they have outscored the Blue Devils inside. Amazing. We've said that a couple of times the last few nights with these uh, incredible games that we've had in the ACC tournament. Again, August, nice job. Man-to-man -man against Okafor. Numbers again for Notre Dame. And Matt Jones knocked it away. He disrupted what was a four-on-one right there. It's, it's, he is forced up. Now, Okafor is 6 of 10 in the game, but he's, he's forced him into some tough he shots. Has. He really has. If you're going to be willing to single cover Okafor, you better have the right guy to do it, even if he is going to get his numbers. This is uh, they fashion this lead. Connaughton hasn't scored yet in this no. game. Unbelievable when you think of it that way. Now, Connaughton was a guy that you'd normally think had to score for Notre Dame to have this kind of lead, or really any lead, against Duke, the way the Blue Devils have been playing the last half of the season. And you see Winslow checking back into the game, and Neil Jefferson sits down. Two and change remaining here in the opening half. A few uh, jaws have dropped to the floor here at the Greensboro Coliseum. On the season, Colson averages 12 minutes a game. He's already played 11 in this first half. I mean, he, he, Mike Bray can't take him out. He's earned the minutes. Jackson with penetration again. Loose ball. They're going to say tie ball. Nestor on top of it. The arrow is to Notre Dame. Now he and Jamie Lucky are going to have a conversation. You know, I think they made an adjustment with the clock that was uh, not necessary. Mike Krzyzewski's asking for a travel. <laughs> Sean Hole is over there with him. He's going to get a few licks in while Sean is over there. A little good cop, bad cop thing going on with the triumvirate of officials here. Colson. He was thinking that was going in. I think everyone else felt that way. <laughs> He's been making them all. Well, that breaks his three-game streak now. Finally a miss. <laughs> now it's Colson checking off the floor. That's no match. Jaleel goes right to the rim. He's got 15 of Duke's 24. Well, look, if, if you're going to get a double team, you've got to force it back that way. And he had August coming down to help, but uh, he let him turn baseline away from the double. Mike Bray gets a timeout with 119 remaining. There's the look. And you see, you got, you got the double coming down here. you got to turn it back that way. And I think, you know what, Mike... They've, they've been cruising along, but he does not want Duke to eat into this lead with the last minute 19 left. No doubt. Well, the Ram power play is brought to you by the Ram 1500. In the second game of yesterday's quarterfinals, Louisville, North Carolina find themselves in a barn burner. And Montrez Harrell would steal the show as he finished with a fast break and an alley-oop dunk. Carolina would go on to win the game and advance to the finals tonight. That's our Ram power play. Tim, a, uh, a quick trip to Greensboro for Louisville, and it was a rather frosty handshake afterwards between Rick Pitino and... Uh, it was. <laughs> it was. And Roy Williams. With the Cardinal fan base that was uh, anticipating a long stay and challenging 
the Blue Heaven crowd Marshall. did not have much of a chance to stay around. Marshall Plumley in the game now. They want to get Okafor to pick up that third foul with a minute 19 left. Remember, this Notre Dame team was lights out, had an 18-point lead at halftime yesterday, and then didn't score for the first 10 minutes from the floor in the second half. And I said, you know, Connaughton didn't score. Grant only has five points in this game, too. Now Jackson's going to get called for the block, it appears. His first. 51.2 remaining in the half. And here's a play, and it's a good call on that situation. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, there's still a long way to go. And this uh, a 14-point deficit, certainly you can overcome that for Duke. They're, uh, they have not had a good offensive half at all, but certainly can put together a second 20. Without question. And, and I think to your point, Mike Bray taking the time out. He wants to be as efficient offensively while his team is on a roll and get it as large a lead as you can because he knows what Duke's capable of and how great they've been playing the last month of the season. Cook. Oh, he's going to be bailed out on a foul against Grant, I think. Yep. Jaron a little concerned about that as he picks it up. That's his second with 47.4 left. So Duke is uh, Duke will get one more shot at the basket. So a chance you, you make these two free throws, you get a stop and come down and score, you could possibly get it under double figures. Closed captioning for ACC basketball tonight brought to you by Bo Jangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. And that does mean Grant's got to sit, too, because you don't want him to get a third. Beecham has checked in. Connaughton, Bastoria. Jackson and Colson, who they simply can't get rid of after this scintillating first 20 minutes he's had. Jonathan almost had his pocket pick. Beecham for three. Boy, what a contribution off the bench for Notre Dame. Last shot time for Duke. Hook from downtown. Half for Notre Dame. Mike Bray pumped up the Irish, number 11 in the country, looking for a bid to the ACC title game in just their second year in the conference. And coming up on the Hardy's halftime report, Mike Hogwood, Corey Alexander, special tournament moment, all of that plus highlights and stats here on the Hardy's halftime report. Who will get North Carolina? Stay right where you are. Geico presents the play of the quarterfinals. Yesterday, Marshall Plumley had a career day against his state rival, NC State, and that alley-oop jam was the exclamation point. Plumley had a career-high 12 points as Duke beat NC State and moved on to today's semifinals. Marshall Plumley's alley-oop is our Geico play of the quarterfinals. Hardy's presents the Hardy's Halftime Report, introducing the Bacon Velveeta Patty Meltdown. It is new at Hardy's and I think somewhat of a surprise here in the Greensboro Coliseum 41 26 Notre Dame on top of Duke it's one of their lowest scoring outputs of the half give Notre Dame's defense some credit Mike Hogwood Corey Alexander with you now Corey the last time they played Duke won by 30 this is a lot different the Notre Dame not getting a lot uh, from Pat Connaughton uh, not get a lot from Jaron Grant but still up big when they've gotten a lot from Demetrius Jackson when you think about it Demetrius Jackson another one of those highly talented guys who didn't have a great freshman year but as a sophomore he's really become one of the leaders for this Notre Dame team and having a big game here tonight absolutely well the winner of this game will play North Carolina if you missed it North Carolina upset the top seed Virginia and Justin Jackson was the hero for the for the Tar Heels getting inside the paint scoring Marcus sorry Malcolm Brock 
Chicago with a huge second half, but Marcus Page was the one to finish it off for the Tar Heels. A great embrace by Roy Williams and Tony Bennett. A lot of respect from those two coaches. And then again at uh, 8.30 tomorrow night, it'll be North Carolina playing the winner of Duke and North Notre Dame. Check out some scores on our Nissan scoreboard. There you see the score from earlier tonight. Uh, Arkansas beats Tennessee in the SEC. Kansas by 10 over Baylor. Villanova Providence had a really, really good game. Iowa State and Oklahoma State at halftime. UCLA, Arizona there in the second half. So Wyoming, Boise State, and Xavier and Georgetown there at halftime. We'll be back with more of our Hardy's halftime report in Notre Dame on top, 41-26. Bring the noise, the pyro, the paint, and the pop-ups. Bring your seven-footers, your five-footers, and your 40-footers. Bring the buzz, the glasses, the hair, your floor burns, your luck, and all your voodoo. But above all, you better bring your A-game. One of my great memories was having a transistor radio hidden in my geometry book in 10th grade at DeMatha High School and listening to the Maryland Duke game when Tate Armstrong, I think, had 34. You set your schedule during the ACC tournament. You were sneaking out, watching games, listening to them. Our family revolved around watching the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament. So that tradition to me is really special. Being that I grew up an ACC fan and I was an assistant at Duke and I'm now back coaching this league, I've seen the experience and the thrill of winning an Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament, the tournament as far as conference tournaments go. That would be an unbelievable achievement for our program at Notre Dame to someday be ACC champions winning the tournament. Mike Brady, uh, I agree with you. This is the tournament and right now his team leading here in this second semifinal. And at this point, we have been telling inspirational stories, folks that have inspired myself, some of our other announcers, and you, Corey, and you have another one for us. Well, Mike, and of course, you know, just like Coach Bray talked about, you know, I'm one of those guys that was inspired by the ACC tournament to become a better basketball player and had an opportunity to play here. But, you know, my experience really being at the ACC tournament really goes back to the fact that I actually met Rob Reichley here. And I actually retired from my first profession as a basketball player when I was 31 years old. But I gained a new career, you know, at the ACC tournament when I was, had the opportunity to become a part of Raycom Sports along with Jimmy Rayburn, Ken Haynes, and Rob Reichley, who I consider to be my coach one that's on from in front of a camera so when you think about that of course i'm so excited for the have part to be able to be a part of this and this gentleman right here rob reichley has helped me so much in gaining a new career and i'll be you know forever grateful to him because of that hey man i'm grateful he put you with me <laughs> we have a great time up here and he's become one of the best folks there's no doubt about it if you have an inspirational story share it with us tweet hashtag my coach hashtag my coach Thanks for telling us that, Corey. Appreciate it. We'll be back with more of our Hardy's Halftime Report in a moment. Notre Dame out on top of Duke in the battle to see who will play North Carolina for the championship. Who is today's ACC star? Each day of the ACC tournament, the ACC Digital Network wants to know who you think shined the brightest. Tell us using hashtag ACC star. Brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Colson has 14. Demetrius Jackson has 11 to lead Notre Dame. And let's take a look now, Corey, at our Hyundai halftime stats. Well, it's really been about the interior. Jalil Okafor for Duke with 15 points on 7 for 11 shooting. And Bonzi Golson giving you know, great production for the Irish. But when you look at it, Notre Dame shooting over 50%, and that's been the biggest difference. Duke has to step it up defensively and find a way to stop the fighting Irish. Notre Dame also has four blocked shots and five steals in that first. 
first half. Can Duke come back? Can Notre Dame hold on? We'll see. Second half on the way. All oh, those demon deacons back in the day could not deal with the G-Man. They are cutting down the nets. The legend, Mike Jeminski, who uh, Jim Spinarkle says would never throw the ball back. Absolutely would never throw the ball back. We welcome I mean, you. I, nobody ever gave a compelling reason why I should. So. <laughs> right, that was, that was great. It's 78 and it was a trivia question. The wake of five seed that made the finals, yeah, uh, but yeah. we wound up winning the winning the title and actually got snowed in in Greensboro and had to stay an extra day. You were playing back in the days where you get double by then to the, the semifinals in those. Yeah, games. it was seven teams and uh, you win the regular season. You got you got the free ride to the semis. Some uh, half of basketball for Notre Dame and uh, Mike Bray, who knows Mike Krzyzewski as well as any, got the job done strategically. Well, and yeah, the idea of not uh, double teaming Okafor terrific. They only had one three in that first half and that came late. But remember last night, Tim, that uh, yeah. Irish got a little wobbly it in the did. second half offensively. And, and, and earlier, Deb Antonelli spoke with Mike Bray. Coach, you got to be pleased with the way you've defended uh, on the inside. Well, you know, our defense has been great. It's been the key. Every Boker for Bucket's been a hard one. I thought Zach's done a great job. And I love how we're attacking the basket. We got to keep driving it, whether they're in man or zone. Thank you, Coach. Yep. He's spot on about Zach August. Uh, those buckets were hard baskets to make. Now, he made them, but they were tough. Yeah, and uh, also, on the other end, aggressive and going at Okafor. It would sure help the cause if they could pick up an early foul or two on him. You Tar Heel fans. It's interesting that uh, dynamic, is it not, when they know they're in the championship and back in 2011 they lost to Duke. And you realize, of course, they'd love another shot at them, but at the same time, to win the ACC tournament title and Duke not be there is, is also something that they kind of dig. It's an interesting circumstance that the North Carolina faithful have watching the second half in this building tonight. Allen, not there. Tapped out though. Tyus Jones gets it. Grayson Allen starting this half along with Jefferson, along with Quinn Cook, Okafor, and Tyus Jones. So some changes. Jefferson out there. Here's Allen. That's a kick with 18 on the shot clock. Krzyzewski called some very early timeouts. He could see his team was a step slow. Also had a few exchanges with a couple of officials in the first half. Not in the best frame of mind. And right away a turnover it, by Duke. And interesting too, Justice Winslow not starting this half. Jefferson out there in his stead. That's right. And uh, Grayson Allen as well. Connaughton. You, you know, this kind of lead and not much production from... Pat Connaughton, that's got to be in the heads of uh, the Irish because their fan base knows that that young man's going to score eventually. The foul was against Allen, his third. And closed captioning for ACC basketball brought to you by Bo Jangles, famous chicken and biscuits. It's Bo time. Well, how about this, Tim? And he's 6'5", and that's probably generous. Leads them in rebounding at 7.8 a game. Leads them in blocks yeah. with 26. Mm -hmm. Gives you 12.6 points and also averages two and a half threes a game. Really unique player. And he wouldn't want to guard him and wouldn't want to stand in the, in the batter's <laughs> box against him either. Fourth round pick of the Baltimore Orioles was in Aberdeen in Class A League last year. It won't be long before he's pitching in the bank. But he, he told he made everybody aware last year. That was a, that's a high pick for somebody who said, look, I'm going back and yeah. I'm playing, I'm oh, playing yeah. basketball. Fighting for the loose ball. And the foul underneath. It'll go against Connaughton. Undercutting Okafor there. Second foul on Pat. Play and it's a you, you can't boy you can't let him get to the baseline. <laughs> Connaughton's like hey he was already falling down I just happened to be in the way and got the foul. Quinn Cook not there rebound to Jefferson. Uh, 
The Jefferson out there, they have a better chance of getting some offensive rebounds. Yeah, that's what he does. He gets on the glass, second chance opportunities, sets screens. Irish owned the glass in the first half, too. Tyus Jones with a leader. Jefferson, another offensive rebound and put back. Second one on the possession. Giving them some energy and a presence on the glass. Well, his first two, and it's 43 to 28. And Tyus Jones with a hand check on Jackson there. Let's see how long, if uh, you know, if I'm the Irish, I'm going to try to get Jaron Grant going in this second half. Grant only had six field goal attempts in the first half, made two five points. Connaughton, that first burst, so good. Another and one coming as Jefferson picks up the foul. Able to get to the right hand. I mentioned the fact about his threes. You have to honor him outside. And uh, he just got Jefferson to stand up, and that gave him a lane. I think, I think for the first probably eight minutes of this half, Okafor is going to have to be a little careful in what he goes after as far as blocks are concerned. The rare miss at the stripe. The old-fashioned three-point play, so it's a 17-point cushion now for Notre Dame. Jones, a wrap around, and he'll have an add one. That foul against August. Well, and that, that too easy, the lane opened up, and if you're Zach August, you don't want to pick up fouls in help. You're going to have enough on your hands with Okafor one-on-one. -on -one. But nice drawing of the contact by Tyus Jones. He and Quinn Cook are really going to have to pick it up. During this 12-game win streak, so much has been said about best backcourts tandems in college basketball. The senior and the freshman, one and done Jones, as they've been discussing. Well, they're going to have to step it up here and prove their point. They're going to make a comeback against Notre Dame. And Allen just picked up his fourth. The ACC mobile app is free and packed with video stats and more. And your chance to win Outback for a year is back. To enter, just click on the Win Outback for a Year banner in the app download and uh, do it today at the acc.com slash apps. Connaughton posting up on Cook. Pulled down by Winslow. Smart play, the versatility. Get a smaller cover on him. Go inside. Okafor. Right past August and Connaughton. Quinn Cook trying to direct uh, the crowd and get them involved. Matt Jones slaps it away. Both he and Jefferson have been really demonstrative out on the floor. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski and Jamie Lucky are really having a difficult time. I mean, they're getting with it a little bit here. Back and forth. It's still going on, the conversation. Mike's already in a bad humor because of the way his team has been performing, and uh, <laughs> I think that may have been more directed oh, yeah. at Jeff Capel than anything else. Yeah. Jamie Lucky said, look, I'll, I'll listen to one of you, but I'm not going to listen to both of you. Yeah. Grant, foul. We'll go against Winslow. Beautiful laser pass inside. Might have gotten away with a little travel on the play, but yep. a good finish. And Lucky's already teed up, but Coach Leonard Hamilton got one earlier in this tournament. Let's go over to Deb Antonelli. Deb? Guys, I got a question for you. If Coach Krzyzewski and his staff created that matchup zone for NC State because they were worried about keeping Cat Barber in front, they're having so much trouble defending dribble penetration. Might we see that zone come back? We saw a couple possessions in the first half. Well, and they, and they still got inside of that, Deb. So, it's, you know, I, I just think it's the defense in general and the effort. But uh, let's see if Colson can continue his flying play from the first half. Matt Jones, that's a charge. That's an easy one to call. Yeah, Tyus actually... Uh, now, Jamie Lucky went right in front of Kay and gave the charge signal again just for effect. Yeah, Tyus Jones actually picked up that call. 
telling you, we're not far away. Nestor's now hearing from. Yeah, that. that's. I mean, that's a good call. Yeah. Got right. It took it right on the chest. Moved his feet. Jones picked up his third. I'm Jackson. Go right at him. Try to pick up that fourth foul. Colson. Leaving it for Vastoria. Okafor rejects him. Tyus Jones clears it out of there. Off the front iron, Demetrius Jackson, the rebound. It's been a huge swing, get it under double oh, figures. Grant a ball by. Boy, you just don't see Mike Krzyzewski coach teams give up layups like that. Well, I think that three might have might have surprised everybody else, but that was a quick transition it, basket. Oh, was it ever? Matt Jones against Connaughton, and he'll pick up the foul. You just don't see that very often. Winslow just said, go ahead and go. Matador defense there. Bring your talents. Bring your lofty goals and impossible dreams. Bring the student and the athlete in you to be pushed, be questioned, be tested, to never quit, never cower, and never, ever coast. Bring your desire to turn an acceptance letter into the best move of your life. We are the ACC, and here, you bring your A game. Welcome to the 2015 New York Life ACC Tournament. Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky, Dev Antonelli. A series of Fast break points for Notre Dame. It's been a layup drill at times. Right in the half court and out of the open court too, Tim. They've been able to get to the front of the rim. Running extremely well. The good tip in right there. Jackson extremely quick end to end. And this play by Grant inside. And uh, right now, Notre Dame outscoring Duke 10 to 4. Fast break points. 34 points in the paint of the 47 scored by the Irish. Matt Jones, no points. Winslow, no points. Allen, no points. Yeah. And, and Mike Krzyzewski sent the message, did he not, when he didn't start them to begin the second half. And frankly, Winslow's done nothing on the defensive end in the second half to warrant staying in there very much longer if, if he doesn't watch out. I mean, he did not get in the, pa the, the running lane of Grant a moment ago. If I'm going to have a guy out there who's not going to score. It might as well be Jefferson. Absolutely. He's going to get on a rebound and defend. And exactly. A little good defense that time. Yep, he stepped up right there, didn't he? There's the blow by. Leaves it for Okafor. So two good plays, just as we pointed out, that Winslow was struggling as he feeds the dime to Jaleel Okafor. A little clap of the hands, too. The body language a little bit better. Okafor, some words of encouragement as Winslow ran by him. Trying to elevate, trying to lift his fellow freshman spirits. And that's going to be a reach in against Quinn Cook. Second foul on Quinn. And it's one and one time now for the Irish, already in the bonus with 14.38 remaining in the game. Colson checks in, Connaughton out. That's a, Tim, they're one of the best. They're a 73% free throw shooting team. So it's a huge bonus to be in the bonus with 15 minutes to go in this game. They already eight of 10 from the free throw line. You got to figure that number is going to at least oh, yeah. double the, I, the attempts. Yeah, and I think that has a little something to do with Mike Shishevsky's demeanor. The lead. 13. 14 and a half remaining. Again, August on an island. That time picked up the foul right away. Got him on the ground. Third foul. <laughs> the sign from Tim Nestor, a bear hug. Yes. 
Oh, I'm wondering too when the strategy changes with Okafor. At some point later on in this game, if they do start doubling. Yeah, well, with August, there's a blow by by Winslow. I think he may have gotten the message it was time to pick it up, and he didn't start the second half. He has come alive in the last minute and a half. Colson gets the foul. It's his first. Boy, look at this. The little pump fake, and he straightens Colson up, and you cannot let Justice Winslow go to his left hand. That's just enough to get him by. August leaves the game. Counted him back on the floor, but to your point, Mike, about when does it change on Okafor, it'll have to change, one would think, once a fourth foul is picked up by August. Right now he's on the bench with three. Right now, uh, you know, Duke has been able to shave four points off that halftime deficit. Jackson working on Cook. Colson. Not this time. Great tap out by Jackson to keep it alive. Okafor clears it. Out to Matt Jones. Leaves it for Cook for three. Jonathan this time just jump and then graze the leather. It's out of bounds. Belongs to Duke. Okay, well, you know, we've seen over the years how they struggle. Duke now one of eight from three in this game. Well, they've been well defended there because in large measure, Khalil Okafor has been defended one-on-one. -on -one. That was as good a look as you're going to get in the yep. open court. There he is again off the feed from Winslow, who's getting some dribble penetration now, and the lead carved to eight. Yeah, Time out, Notre Dame. Yeah, good call by Mike Ray. Get the crowd simmered down a little bit. The 2015 New York Life ACC Tournament. From Brando, Mike Jaminski, Deb Antonelli, Mike Hogwood, Corey Alexander, working throughout our studios throughout the course of the evening for both semifinal games. And I trust Tim Brandt is enjoying this game, working on his championship board for you tomorrow, G-Man. Astoria for three. Only the second three of the game for the Irish, but a nice answer out of a timeout. Gets the crowd quieted down, and then he come out and hit a three. Yeah, Duke had cut it to eight. That was as close as they had been since it was 12 to five. And Okafor just looked at the referee. Yeah. And he feels like, you know, hey, a little break here. August right there with him. Had to give up the baseline that time. He's got three fouls, and we've got a whole lot of basketball yet to be played. Well, you gotta, again, if you're August, you gotta play him straight up that time and try to at least influence him to the middle. Astoria falling away. Boy, he came out five points, two, po two possessions. Oh, Cook is wide open, and they missed him. Really didn't swing the ball as quickly as they could have. He was ready to tee up a three. Yeah, he had his hand set shooting position. Irish in the zone. Well, given the numbers from downtown, not a bad idea. But that rainbow is way off the mark. Jones, an offensive rebound. Right. Astoria clears it and gets it out to Jaron Grant. What an easy shot, too. Jackson with an extra pass, and August puts it in. 56-43. Well, has Notre Dame had an answer for every, uh, every rush up the floor? They really had. Nice spin move, and he's going to be fouled, and that will get August to four. Nope, they're going to get Grant instead, a reach. His third. The Irish continue layup after layup and lead by a baker's dozen. 
You're watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Let's take a look, Mike, at our Avalon Defensive Shield. The well-noted job done against Mark Godfrey's Wolfpack and contrast that to tonight. A little different. Well, uh, just a little different and uh, a little different, a, be a little better shooting team, too, that uh, Notre Dame as a team shoots 51% from the floor. They're 52% tonight. There are those numbers we're talking about. Transition to tonight. The Irish really moving it around, and uh, Dan Antonelli has more on Notre Dame. You guys are going to get out of the zone, Notre Dame. They're going to go back to man, and they do not want to foul Okafor. He might have a big night, but they're sticking with their game plan right now. Well, Deb, you know, you don't have to now, but uh, at 52 percent, it's the one weak part of his game. In an in-game situation, I think you put him on the line. That wraparound pass was one that Vestoria would love to have back. Leads to a turnover and a run out for Cook. Winslow tries to save the over and back and does. Too strong for Cook and another run out off a missed perimeter jumper. That's not a good take either and uh, he was over a foul. But Grant trying to get himself jump started offensively. Really those long shots from the corners. Those are the first passes to fast break. Grayson Allen back on the floor along with Winslow, Okafor, Quinn Cook. And Tyus Jones. Well, that is going to be number four on August. Colson probably coming back in the game. And Mike Ray is saying that uh, Okafor, he's trying to sell his side of the story that Okafor is bearing his shoulder into the defensive player. Uh, Mike Ray is asking Sean Hull, what do you want my guy to do? And of course, his, uh, his old mentor is on the other side saying they're hanging all over my guy. <laughs> Back and forth we go, and how you deal with Jaleel Okafor. <laughs> Two trial lawyers out there <laughs> trying to plead their case. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get a little help from my friends. Well, these guys have really struggled. Now, I will say this, Winslow's energy level on defense especially has improved in the last few minutes. Uh, Marshall Plumley over at the line. I wonder if they're going to get Okafor off the floor for just a couple of minutes, maybe to the under eight minute mark. Empty possession there. And, and, tip in. In. and oh, by the way, for Winslow. 56 44. Huge break for Duke right there. That would have been like a turnover with Okafor going 0 for 2 at the line. Knocked it away. Quick hands of Grayson Allen. Winslow. Yes. Here come the Blue Devils. 56-48 again. And Colson has not had the same impact this half as he did in the first half. Connaughton. Wow. He fouled by Okafor. It'll be three. And Okafor just patting his face. He knows he made a huge mistake right there. That's his third foul, too. Yeah, not only picking up his third foul, but doing it on a three-point jump shooter. Connaughton at 77% just out of control, and you've got to either run by him or just stop short. He is a bit of a gentle giant, isn't he? He's got such a great court demeanor about him, well, Jaleel. You know, and... and and Mike Krzyzewski was trying to get him out of the game because of the place of play, though. He couldn't yeah. get Plumlee in. You're right. And now Marshall will get out there. Just like that, back to an 11-point lead. Incredible, isn't it? Uh, on the one hand, you, you love to see the likes of Jaleel Okafor in the game. Even though you know you only have one opportunity of seeing him in the college game. And there's Connaughton who puts off a pro career in baseball because he's got to come back for a fourth season. Better to have loved and lost than yeah. never loved at all. <laughs> that's right. It's, uh, and by the way, that's what makes the college game so unique. I think uh, all of us should embrace it. 
Grant off the bounce over Plumley, not there. Winslow again against Vastoria, stays with it. Strong move to the hoop, and Winslow's got nine. Wow. Yeah, well, and then even more so with uh, Okafor out of the game, he has to step up. Irish got out to a very large lead. They've maintained at least space from eight points or beyond since the break. They've always made plays when challenged. They're challenged again, and there's another example, as this time Vastoria uses the glass. He may be the Connaughton in waiting. He is. You know? Yep. Look at Colson. Right at Winslow. Took. Ah! Yeah, that Kick. ball was kicked. 22 on the shot clock as Matt Jones comes back into the game. Grayson Allen sits down. Neil Jefferson will also check in for Winslow. And Justice uh, sat to open the second half, and when he got his number called, performed admirably. Tyus Jones, he loves going to his right. There's Plumley with a putback. And a future lieutenant gets it done again at point blank range. Well, exactly what they needed him to do. Boy, with Okafor out of the floor to get a bucket from him is huge, like finding money in the sofa. <laughs> That is fun when that happens, oh, isn't it? Yeah, especially when it's a 50. <laughs> <laughs> Grant to a wide open Jackson who turned down a shot. Well, if you're going to get a better one than that, Olsen over Plumley and he gets the foul. Blue Devils. Trying to fight back with Justice Winslow. Trailing the Irish, and we'll be back after this word from your local ACC stations. Take a look at a game summary presented by Valero. See the numbers on the two guys inside, and who would have thought Bonzi Colson would be posting these kinds of numbers tonight, Mike? Yeah, you have to score in the second half, though, and Mike Krzyzewski bringing Okafor back in with those three fouls. Wilson pretty solid at the line with 71, but misses that first. Got there 48 times prior to getting to the ACC tournament. 62-52, seven and a half remaining. August is out of the game, so that means Colson's going to hang with him, and it does appear that they're going to stay with single coverage and a turnover again committed by Duke. Tenth of the game. By the way, the Blue Devils have done a much better job on the offensive boards in the second half. They have 12 for the game, nine of them in this half. Oh, a stop and go! Shifting gears, Demetrius Jackson. That is for real. Well, and the other thing, too, Okafor had to lay, it, lay off that play. He couldn't afford to go for the block. Matt Jones counters with a tray. And it's 64-55. We're back to nine. Well, Jones had missed. He only had two field goal attempts before that. Only one point in the game. Astoria is really playing with a great deal of confidence tonight. Jonathan finding Colson baseline. Well defended by Winslow. Okafor clears to Tyus Jones. Jones again. Good rebound. Colson only has one foul, Tim, so he can be pretty physical with Okafor. August is the one with four. Jackson's feeling it. He really is. Okafor is going to wow. get the bump. That's number four. Nope. They're going to get they're going to get Cook instead with a reach. Big. That's, that's real big. 
Oh, look at the guy. He, he got him on his hip, and just there's nothing that Okafor could do on that play. Uh, Jaleel Okafor was very, very fortunate that Quinn Cook got that foul. If it had not been for Cook's presence, Jaleel would have collected his fourth foul. Talk about his guardians, David and Beth Whitfield, and how big a part they've been in his yep. life. And uh, Mike Bray said uh, you know, that Jackson has really grown into that role of running this ball club. Fine young man, great student. What do you think of uh, the outstanding talent that he was, and maybe a little slower to come around than some of the other McDonald's All-Americans as freshmen. A lot of, he, a lot of, a lot of pressure, though, playing yeah. last year, playing at home. Absolutely. You know, a lot of expectations. This year, much more comfortable. Not everybody's going to be Durant. <laughs> Okafor. Right at Colson and a quick timeout by Coach K. Mike Bray's wondering, wait a minute. My guy got knocked to the ground. <laughs> He's just so strong and powerful. And might have, might have, if he didn't fully extend on no, that right no. hand. Well, a reminder. Tomorrow, we will crown a new champion of the ACC. Only a few have earned the right to hold that trophy. All the great players, coaches, and ACC basketball history have battled and fought for the coveted prize. It's the ACC championship. Coverage begins tomorrow night, 8 p.m., prime time on the ACC Network. And because it's going to be going away from Greensboro for a few years, Mike, it, it couldn't be better, I think, to go back to this, this format where it is played on a Saturday night. Well, I, you know, and I, I know the coaches love it, especially those the teams that came from the old Big East because it's that model. But more importantly, what it does, Tim, it gives you an extra day of rest for the teams going into the NCAA tournament instead of playing on Sunday and Saturday night. A little four corners here with Jackson dribbling. Yep. Colson, Grant, Connaughton, Bastoria, Jackson, the five on the deck for Mike Gray. Matt Jones in an all-out denial of Grant. He's just face guarding him. Jackson, right to the rack, well defended by Okafor. Winslow takes it out of there. All the way to the rack. No one stopped him. Wow, what a turnaround for him. He really looked lost in that first half. He did, and even early in the second half. And it was a couple of defensive plays and passes that got him going, not a score. The lead is down to seven, as close as they've been since Notre Dame led 12 to five very early. Well, he's a lefty, and this is just the first. And there are two guys back for Notre Dame, three actually, but none of them bigs, none of them shot blockers, and he saw the opportunity to get to the rim. He just split the defense. time that Mike Ray called a timeout, his team came out and hit a three and brought the lead back to double digits. Let's we'll see what happens on this play. They've been able to press the right buttons at just the right time. Here's Winslow. We were critical of him early, I think understandably so, but he's really pumped it up lately. Yeah, and he's closing in on a double-double, two to 11 points, five of eight shooting, nine rebounds. North Carolina waits for the winner. Three years since a, uh, somebody from Tobacco Road has claimed this crown. Veteran teams have won it the last three years. Florida State, Miami, Virginia. Grant with the shot clock winding down. Oh, and, that's August. August, and that's five on August. He set a pick, got the elbow up, and he's done. That's not at all what Mike Ray had in mind coming out of that timeout. Well, and it's, you know, that's, the body language for Notre Dame now isn't very good. Mike Ray's trying to get their attention that, you know, I don't like this rule when in the fifth foul, it's essentially a timeout yep. for the team. But, uh, you know, again, for uh, August, that's an easy call. You can't pick up your fifth like that. And he even, he even had an elbow with it. So now they are they are very fortunate that Colson only has one foul, so he's got some room to play with. 
But you've got to come to a stop and let your guy. He's, I think he was a little worried that the clock was yeah. winding down and right. wanted to set it quickly. He did a nice job for the most part on Okafor. Now we'll see if anything changes with Bonzi Colson down there by his lonesome dealing with the player of the year in the ACC. Maybe the country. He certainly wants it. That ball is kicked by Jackson. Gonna get awfully interesting now. Notre Dame, so adept offensively, need a few better trips in the next couple of minutes. You smell a Duke run now, don't you? You really do. Wise, well, you know, Mike Crazy sticking with that in the throat before. It's like playing one on one in the gym by yourself. I like his chances in that situation. After a make, you can come back with uh, some pressure, and Duke extends after the made basket. And a foul on Matt Jones. Jaleel Okafor. Too big, too strong, too quick. When defended one on one, he's begging for a double team now. The paint and the pop-ups. Bring your seven-footers, your five-footers, and your 40-footers. Bring the buzz, the glasses, the hair, your floor burns, your luck, and all your voodoo. But above all, you better bring your A-game. This blank canvas has taken shape, and the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament is now the centerpiece. We are in the era of new artists looking to create their own legacies. This is the ACC Tournament. Notre Dame with a five-point lead, and I've been tracking the low post feeds for Jalil Okafor. There's been 15 low post feeds in the game. He is seven for 10 when he catches in that isolation. He's been able to draw four fouls in that situation, Mike. So you talked about potentially bringing a double. Let's see what they do in the next 338. I mean, if, if they're gonna change, they're gonna change now, Deb, and uh, you know, give him a different look now that uh, you've, you've got him quieted down and not a lot of confidence on the perimeter in a tight game. Now Colson just going into an all out, trying to go in an all out front. No help coming. Good outlet pass. Cook can't hit the three ball. Winslow triggers it to Tyus Jones. He can. And it's 68 to 64. 13th offensive rebound for Duke. 15 second chance points. Yeah, and they're now really getting the job done on the glass overall after Notre Dame had been ahead in rebounding the first 15 minutes of this game. Big trip here for Mike Gray's club. Haven't heard from Vestoria lately. Or Colson, who was scintillating early. Or Connick. And an offensive foul. This one will go against Grant. His fourth. Well, Mike Krzyzewski, his team recharged their batteries when he changed lineups to start this half. And Winslow particularly has played with more energy and it's made a big difference. Only four points in the last four and a half minutes. Okafor backing in on Colson. And he wrapped him up. He had the chicken wing out and he got caught. That's four on him by Jamie Lucky. Four fouls on him and yet another turnover. 68-64. Oh, they said no foul. I beg your pardon. They just said turnover. So no whistle, no foul, just a turnover. Astoria lost it. Yet again, Winslow comes out. He has Cook and Matt Jones with him. Olsen really trying to fight and to get around in front of Okafor. Oh, 
Yep. Colson prior to the shot picked up the foul. But only his second. Well, he's got, as they say, a few more to give, and my guess is he will. Well, and this is again, <laughs> Tim, minute and 48 left. Yep. I think you start putting Okafor on the line if you can at this yeah, point. It, it can be like a turnover. If you recall, Winslow got an offensive round, uh, rebound put back almost off his forehead to help ignite his own offense here in this half. And a timeout taken by Mike Ray. Trying to hold on. Well, the Devils are on quite a run. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I give a lot of uh, credit to Justice Winslow, too. I mean, Okafor has been outstanding all game long, but Winslow was the one who really turned his game around in the half. And how about this? Okafor, 28 points, only 18 field goal attempts. Leads the nation in field goal percentage, and he's helping that number at 67%. That's our edge to the game brought to you by the Principal Financial Group. The numbers illustrating the turnaround in this half for the Blue Devils. If you're Mike Bray, you certainly have plenty of options, but uh, many of them have not looked for their shot of late. Astoria has not. Connaughton hasn't. Yep. I mean, they really haven't. Yeah, Jaron Grant is, uh, and they haven't been able to finish. And even now, though, at, at 148, if you're still driving, Okafor with the with the foul situation, he's still, you know, still okay with three. He can be a lot more aggressive inside defensively. You know, the one thing that the Irish have done, usually with either Jackson or Grant, they have challenged Duke and really gotten to the rim with dribble penetration. You would think at some point, at the very least, that would leave Connaughton or Vastoria open for a good look. Let's see what Okafor does at the free throw line. Two for six tonight. We used to say Hackershack. The rest of the way, it could be heck of four. Well, that's, a, that's a turnover right there. I definitely think, yeah, empty possession on the two missed shots. I definitely think olson has got a couple to work with or else you come with somebody else. Absolutely. as much clock as they can go with 10 get a high screen roll for Jackson this is what having guys that can handle it multiple guys really can pay dividends for you and a quality basketball IQ shot clock down to three connaughton has got to make it happen he does Wow! what a shot at the buzzer confidence when you've got quality scores and shooters Basketball IQs very high, and Notre Dame's got them. They need a foul quickly. Yep. And then nobody's looking over at the bench. Mike Krzyzewski wants a foul, and nobody sees him. They've run at least 12 seconds. Without a doubt. Clock. Yeah, he's he's going bonkers. Now he's, now he's, now he's waved him off. Yeah, now he's waved him off. They're too deep into the clock not to go ahead and play it out. They lost, they lost about 30 seconds right there. Really did. Ooh, the iron unkind late to Jackson. That would have been a dagger. Cook off the ball fake. Grant the rebound. And a quick foul given up by Winslow. Yeah, Quinn Cook wanted a foul there from Tim Nestor. He's very upset about it. Here's the play and uh, the look inside and right in the release just in time. 34 seconds of really good defense by Duke, and uh, the senior comes up big. I'm really surprised that Coach K could not get that foul down. Well, I was say, you know, somebody's got to be looking over at the bench, whether it's Tyus Jones or, you know, to, to get that communication. 
but he was clearly right from the start of that possession was signaling foul and nobody saw him. Mike, Virginia has already lost. Duke has lost. Both were vying for one seeds. Conventional wisdom is at least one will get a one. What do you think? I, you know, I don't know, Tim. I mean, you, Duke beat. Yeah. Beat Wisconsin they in did. Wisconsin. They sure did. I, I think at least one team's got to get in. That team would likely be Duke. I would agree. But then, then you know, Virginia wins the they, they they win the regular season and get to the semis, play a tough game. This is one of the biggest wins in Notre Dame history in a year when they've been making quite a lot. Congratulations to Mike Bray. Well, how about how about this this year? Nine and three in road neutral games, and on the ACC on the road, seven <laughs> and two. Yep. He and Rod Pelinas and able assistant Anthony Solomon, who played at this league in Virginia. Martin Inglesby, all of the Irish staff, the trainer, Skip Meyer, all of them have got to be really pleased with this victory. As you see, Okafor and Cook. A lot of people, sitting down. A lot of people disappointed and anticipating a Duke North Carolina final. Yeah, well, you could say the party crasher came from the east. Yeah, the Irish earned it, though. Or from the Midwest. <laughs> yes, they did earn it. Outplayed Duke from beginning and ultimately to the end. And single coverage on Okafor was exactly what the doctor ordered for Mike Gray against his mentor. Well, and this is a real big, a great moment right there. One of the most gracious men in all of sports, Mike Krzyzewski. He hates losing, but he's certainly happy for Mike Gray. Notre Dame will take their shamrock right into the ACC Tournament Final against the North Carolina Tar Heels tomorrow night by virtue of their win over Duke. The number two team in the country goes down to number 11 here in the ACC tournament semifinal round. Tim Brandt and Mike Jaminski will have it for you tomorrow in prime time. What an entertaining game it will be. And we touched on the importance of this win, and particularly for Bonzi Colson, who was one of the real stars coming off the Notre Dame bench, and he's with Deb Antonelli right now. Bonzi, how do you feel battling Okafor all game? Oh, it's a battle, man. You can't take no players off with him, man. He's a really good player. He's got to play with a lot of heart with him. You got to keep battling with him. When Coach told you the game plan was to play him straight up, what were your thoughts? Uh, let's play him straight up, man. You know, we have to battle with him no matter what, man. And we did that tonight, and it's a great one for us. How about you attacking off the bounce? You were able to find some space and get to the rim. How important was that for you to attack him on the defensive end? Yeah, I noticed that the high post was open a lot, so I flashed. I tried creating moves off that, and you know, luckily the shots went in, man. It was just a great one for us. I'm not expecting you to know this, but Notre Dame has never played in the championship of a conference final, not when they were in the Big East and certainly not here. How's that make you feel? Hey, it's a blessing, man. You know, we, it was a great, it was up and down season, man. We stayed with each other. We had each other's back, and we came out, and we finished the season, the regular season strong. When you guys spread the floor and go small, because at 6'5", when you're playing the center, that's a small lineup. How good can this offense be? It can be really good, man. We, we showed that a lot throughout all our games, man. We just got to keep it up. North Carolina in the championship. What are your thoughts? We got to go get them, man. That's the end of the story. We just got to go get them. They've got a lot of bigs. They rebound the basketball. What are you going to have to do? Just continue to box out and just continue to go to the glass. All right, thanks, Bonzi. No problem. Thank you. He got right to the point, didn't he, Mike? <laughs> he really did. Bonzi's pretty energetic, and who can blame him? That was a great point that Deb made about never having been in a conference tournament final to have it happen in just their second year yep. in a league that's been as top-heavy as the Atlantic Coast Conference with five teams at one point in the top ten. That is uh, quite a measure of success for Mike Bray's franchise there. Well, and the interesting thing about tomorrow, Tim, is that extra game, how does that affect North Carolina yeah. coming into that, not getting the double bye? I thought they looked a little tired in the last few moments of the Virginia game. Yeah. You know, they, they beat you up, the Cavaliers. They really do. Yeah, and they're going to, and certainly I would think Notre Dame is really going to look to pu push the pace, try to get into their legs as much as right. they can in that game. What did you make of uh, the, the performance by Duke tonight, particularly early when it appeared they were a step slow, a couple of times Mike really had to kind of give some shock treatment to, to
to his younger players. Winslow was really listless until really the second half of the game. I, well, I think I think the biggest key is that they they made Duke a two point shooting team. That's right. You know, Okafor going to work inside. Nobody else really stepping up, and they only hit, I think, uh, one or two threes in yes. the whole game. And you know when they have games like that, right. sometimes they struggle. Let me ask you, you know, coaches, the scouting today in college basketball is maybe better than it's ever been. I think it's one of the reasons why the scoring is down. Mm -hmm. The assistants do a great job, and the videotape is so readily available. Would, would it be safe to say that Mike Bray gave a blueprint for success on how to defend Duke tonight? Yeah, and, and, and but I, I wouldn't think that, you know, going forward that as many guys around him would have the, the efforts or the lack of scoring that they did. I think mm -hmm. they'd be able to uh, adjust to that. But certainly, a, you know, I, I think it is something that you, should, you can look at with this team. Let him go to work inside and then foul late. That's the story from here. We will be back to wrap it up in just a moment. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely night for the leprechauns. We'll be right back. For only the fourth time in history, the top two seeds in the ACC tournament have lost on the same day. Mike Hogwood, Corey Alexander with you now. And you know, uh, Duke made a run in the second half, but Notre Dame strong balance scoring throughout this game. And that was, of course, one of the best situations for Notre Dame. And Jaron Grant, of course, who's their leading scorer, but also the leading assist man in the ACC. And he really showed his playmaking ability tonight. Duke did a job on him defensively, keeping him away from the basket. But they also have Bonzi Colson stepping up and giving them huge production, as well as Demetrius Jackson. Both of those guys in double figures in the first half of 14 and 11 points, respectively. And on the other side, it was Jalil Okafor who got the job done from Duke, not only in the first half, but all night long. But Notre Dame's game plan to guard him one-on-one -on -one and put pressure on the opposing players from Duke on the perimeter really worked out in their favor. Okafor ended up with 28 points. Colson with 17 for Notre Dame. Demetrius Jackson had 15. And then when you look at it, it was a strong comeback from Duke in the second half. But that shot there by Pat Connaughton really was the one that sealed the deal for the fighting out. Right at the end of the shot clock. And it's North Carolina, Notre Dame tomorrow. What do you think about the matchup, Corey? Well, I think it's going to be a great matchup because you look at a strong perimeter team in Notre Dame versus a very strong interior team from North Carolina. And those contrasting styles, I think, make for a great game. But when you look at it, North Carolina will be playing his fourth game in four days. Will the fatigue factor set in? And great that's, point. That's the difference in being the fifth seed compared to being that fourth seed and getting that first round by. And the fifth seed's never won this event. We'll see if uh, history has been made tomorrow. I think it's going to be a great game tomorrow. Now, the game will start at 8 30 our coverage tomorrow will start at eight o'clock and that'll do it for tonight from the semi-final day at the greensboro coliseum for our entire crew mike hopwood here saying so long for greensboro for highlights and must-see moments from this game and others check out the acc.com we'll see you tomorrow night at eight for the championship game between north carolina and notre dame good night everybody